Foxy. Oh. Hi, hi. Oh. How are you? Hello, baby. <laughs> How's I'm it going? back in town. How are you? Not bad. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, looking forward to the film. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hostility to these early films, which are less basic, best than water, and even to say, more successful. 
Well, the only thing I can say to Kevin Costner and Troma is that Kevin Costner started in Sizzle Beach, USA yeah. with Troma. In the water. Yeah. In the water, right? Yeah. Sizzle Beach, USA was in the water, Kevin Costner in the water. Yeah. Years later, where did he go? Water World, in yeah. the water, except he spent $200 million. He obviously loved doing low-budget movies in the water. And right. Troma is very often underwater. So Fantastic. We, yeah. we come out to very, very wet on that. Brilliant. Um, the room's been circulating the trailer has something to do with the re-release of certain Russian air classics in the UK. Could you clear up any of these rumors and explain if this is actually happening? Or? Well, first of all, may I compliment you? You're extremely well prepared, which is more than I can say. Uh -huh. I, it's terrific for a young person to be able to put more than three words together, especially a trauma fan. It's yeah. incredible, yeah. the fact that you're so well prepared. <laughs> now, regarding Russ Meyer, yeah. you know, when I was at Yale, we used to have Russ Meyer Film Festival. Oh, yeah, that's and the that. place would, you know, we'd have Fellini and three people would show up, or we'd have uh, you know, George Cukor or Fritz Lang, and then you have two or three people. And Russ Meyer, the place was <laughs> like a riot. Right. And uh, to this day, a major, major following. Yeah. I, I know that, that, that his movies are coming in uh, along with Troman now, yeah. but I certainly wouldn't take credit for that. I believe right. Russ Meyer has an enormous following here. Yeah. He has certainly been an influence on my earth, and um, uh, I would not <coughs> presume to take any credit for opening his doors for him. Oh, right, yeah, because I was going to ask that. Is, is he a strong influence for you then? I would, when you first started, I would say he was an inspiration. Yeah. He was an independent. He had a style. He had a vision. He yeah. had, um, he had two visions. Two yeah. large, melon, and heavy visions. Yeah. But uh, obviously, as you know, Raj Corman was the role oh, yeah. model uh, who I discovered at Yale when yeah. I was screening movies. Fact, he was making good movies on modest budgets and provocative scripts and good acting and uh, interesting. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And uh, what uh, Roger has said about trauma is that trauma has taken what he pioneered, namely the genres of straight horror and science fiction, and trauma has put a special trauma spin, the trauma touch, a uh, comedic uh, style, as you say. Uh, that's what Roger has said. Yeah. Next, um, Tantier is someone who's clearly quite a big by Trover, and he's admitted it as well. And with, um, what are the facts surrounding the rumors that you turned a feeling Tarantino right away when he came to the world? Oh, never, never. never. No, I, no we been, did this, turn down Madonna. Yeah, yeah, yeah we still turned down, turn down Madonna for the first turn on. Yeah. Uh, yes, that's my partner of 23 years, Michael like Burris, that was his fault. That was, he was the genius who turned down. <laughs> but, but, but we would never, no, Quentin, uh, oh, yeah. uh, we never turned him down. Oh, but oh, here is the trauma times. Uh, really? Trauma Times here with Quentin Tarantino in a trauma t shirt. Yeah, I know. Plus, he is doing this, and this is the famous Trauma Thumb. Uh, trauma oh. invented this, yeah. uh, the thumb. And there's the Traumaville game, the Battle of the Trauma Bill. I've got that, actually. Yeah, fantastic know. game. So yeah, it's yeah. Quentin. Yeah, yeah. Right. We were recently in uh, Spain, and Quentin was at the Sydney Film Festival, oh. uh, where he was presenting a film, and Romeo and Juliet were the official selection. Yeah. And Quentin was uh, having a, a, a tremendous uh, effect on our fans. Mm -hmm. But it'll be in the, it'll be a takeoff on the Sergio Leone movie, yeah, yeah. satire of Sergio Leone. Now, uh, no, the the, the on the website, yeah. we our fans are writing uh, the class of Newton High Park for Battle of the Bikinis of Humanoids, which is uh, every two weeks there is a contest, and fans write two pages. The best two pages wins the contest, gets about 25 pounds, and gets to have his her or his name as one of the authors of the classic of my part four, and uh, eventually gets uh, his or her uh, one two pages published on the website. And right now, I believe there are about 22 pages of the classic of my part four battle with the of humanoids on the Troma website, and we're slowly getting to a very fine script. Excellent, that's my college. Well, you should, you should definitely uh, tell the British fans to, to uh, plug in the Troma's website, and, uh, because the fans can certainly write better than I can. So another yeah. script will be better than whatever I can do. And speaking of the record, are you Samuel Wade? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, on the record or off the record? Oh, right, yes. uh, I was once a member of the Director's Guild. Oh, yeah. uh, 
So I directed under the name of Samuel Wheeler. I had to stay in the union to get uh, uh, honest work so we could pay our rent. And I was not permitted to do non-union movies. I was going to Lloyd Kaufman. So I did them under Samuel Wilde, my great grandfather's name. And then uh, I eventually quit the union because they kept accusing me of making movies and putting out trials. All right. And, and this uh, Eric Lucio, is he a real person? Yes, Eric Lucio. Eric Lucio was a real person. He discovered Kevin Costner in the Beach USA. Eric Lucio directed Lust of Freedom, Fortress of America, Classic Duke of High Park. Lust of Freedom is the second one it's gone. Lust of Freedom is a great, great story. After two minutes, there was a thing in the dark side of the that showed me special. Yes. And before that, I've seen Toxic Avenge. Ah, and then when I read this, I'm not sure if I'm not Toxic Avenge, but I saw there were more films like that. And that's how I've done the Avenge. Oh, wow. Yeah, there it is. Excellent. And Richard Haynes as well. He did. And I saw another one of his films with Alien, Space Avenge, or something. Yeah, well, we, he, after Class of New High yeah. Part 1, uh, Haynes went and flapped his wings in glory on his own. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. And a little bit like the best of Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then he is out there making his movies. Uh, he edited many movies for us. Really? He was with us editing for about eight years. He was the editor on the original Toxic Avenger movie and uh, a number of, I think, I think Haynes edited uh, perhaps Stuck on You. Oh, I, I, yeah. no, actually Ralph Rosenblum edited Stuck on You. Woody Allen edited it. Yeah. Uh, I don't recall who edited it. I don't, I can't remember the movie. It's quite Woody Allen's film, isn't it? Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Very much so. Very much so. Well, thanks so much. Well, James, you're a great, uh, great uh, critic and uh, wonderful uh, intellectual. Uh, and thank you. As a stroma, and we are very grateful. I hope you will enjoy Tromeo and Juliet. Oh, so do I. Thanks. We are very grateful to you and our fans, and uh, and thank to you. everybody and all the millions of people out there in Hollywood, uh, right. yeah. I mean, in London. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.